Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there can be no doubt we are living in the last minutes of human history and world events prove it the bible tells us although people see the signs of jesus return they are willingly ignorant sadly this includes many in the christian church as well second peter 3 3 through 7 knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Now to rising tensions off the coast of Alaska. After a fleet of Russian and Chinese ships conducted joint naval drills not far from U.S. waters, our chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz is in Washington with the latest. This was a very large fleet of ships, nearly a dozen, from two of our main adversaries coming close to American waters. The U.S. response to these joint Chinese-Russian exercises was immediate, the Navy dispatching four U.S. warships and reconnaissance aircraft to shadow those Chinese and Russian vessels. The Chinese and Russian warships did stay in international waters, but having those joint patrols was most certainly provocative, highlighting the growing cooperation between those world powers at a time of increasing tension with the U.S. over Taiwan and, of course, the war in Ukraine. All right. Well, China and Russia conducting a joint naval operation, bringing 11 ships near the coast of Alaska last week. The U.S. mobilizing four destroyers and patrol planes in response to guide the ships away from U.S. waters. The Wall Street Journal editorial board writing, quote, the naval patrol is best understood as a warning that U.S. territory isn't safe, as well as a test of how the U.S. will respond. The world is getting more dangerous, and a complacent U.S. political class isn't educating the public about the growing threats. Gordon, it's great to see you, and I think the editorial board at the Wall Street Journal summed it up pretty nicely there. Well, certainly, because we have to assume that if there's going to be a war in Asia, and Henry Kissinger tells us it's probable, then we're going to be facing not just China, but also China's friends, specifically Russia and North Korea. And the Wall Street Journal is right. We have a political class that is complacent, has very little sense of urgency. You know, we're on the edge of war, and the Biden administration refuses to fill the strategic petroleum reserve, which it drained last year. So I don't know how this gets more dangerous. The Chinese can see it. And I think they're going to try and take advantage of the situation. The Chinese view the war in Ukraine as not a war between Ukrainians and Russians primarily, but as primarily a proxy war, a proxy war between China and the United States. So we better win this. And if we leave Russia in control of Ukrainian territory, that's a big green light for Beijing's territorial aggression in East Asia. What do you think uh, is the Biden 
doctrine here, if there is one, uh, when you look at all of the advances that China has made that have gone uh, without a response, you look at those silos that were built in the Chinese desert capable of carrying nuclear weapons, there was basically no response. We had the joint naval exercises between the Russian Navy and the Chinese Navy that there was no response. Now they're expanding that uh, off of the coast of Alaska. So what are we supposed to do here where, again, bit by bit, Russia gets tighter with China, China benefits from this extension of the war, and America, time and time again, uh, seems to ignore this. Well, first of all, the president of the United States needs to have a candid conversation with the American people, saying that, look, China's Xi Jinping is readying the Chinese people for war. He's mobilizing all of Chinese society, not just the military, and that the United States needs to prepare. And your point about uh, nuclear weapon silos. We've got to remember that Chinese doctrine is to threaten to use nuclear weapons to prevent the United States and others from coming to the uh, aid of Taiwan, Philippines, Japan, whatever. So this is not necessarily going to be a conventional war, and President Biden needs to ready the American people. Gordon, you brought up um, this issue about, you know, China potentially invading parts of Asia. We're talking about Taiwan specifically. Chinese state media releasing a new eight-part TV documentary series about its army's ability to attack Taiwan, and it reportedly shows drills simulating precision strikes against Taiwan and dozens of soldiers pledging to give up their lives if needed in a potential attack against Taiwan. So we've discussed this many times. Um, your reaction to that and the potential for this to happen reasonably soon? On the reasonably soon point, we've got to remember that on Saturday, this Saturday, uh, the United States issued a warning to China that it, we were prepared to use force against China at Second Thomas Shoal in the South China Sea. That's the Philippines. You know, this documentary um, is, again, preparing the Chinese people for war. And it can be Taiwan, but it could be Japan or it could be some other country. The Chinese regime, because of problems at home, which are actually becoming more and more severe, um, has an incentive to rally the Chinese people with conflict abroad. And that means this is a regime that can take us by surprise because we Americans think we're at peace, but the Chinese believe that this is a war situation. And by the way, they're exercising with their friends, the Russians that you just pointed out. And we've had these increasingly provocative statements from North Korea over the last couple of days regarding Taiwan. Mm. It does look like there will very well be a war, as Kissinger has said. So no, the Biden administration is clueless right now. They think they're at peace. And unfortunately, that's not the way the many people in the world, including aggressors, view the situation. I believe God has raised up Joe Biden for such a time as this. I believe God is using Joe Biden as judgment on the United States of America. Since Biden took office, every kind of evil has run amok. God will use anyone he chooses to fulfill his purpose. And I believe that purpose for Joe Biden is the destruction of America. Russia launched more than 70 missiles and drones at Ukraine overnight in one of the biggest assaults in recent weeks, an escalation of force after two Russian ships were hit and damaged by drones in the Black Sea. Ukraine's Air Force said at least 10 of Russia's 70 missiles and drones evaded its defenses. A blood transfusion center in northeast Ukraine and a grain silo and military airfield west of the capital, Kyiv, getting hit. It's Russia's likely reaction to this dramatic first on Friday. Ukraine's military claimed its sea drones hit a commercial Russian port on the Black Sea and this vessel, believed to be a Russian warship. Crippled and listing to one side, it was towed home to a naval base. Satellite imagery appearing to show it leaking oil, contradicting Moscow's claim it successfully thwarted that attack. Port strikes have become the new battlefield, with Russia hitting two minor Ukrainian ports in the past two weeks and its biggest port of Odessa the week before that, all forcing global grain prices higher. <laughs> As drone attacks have ramped up too, targeting both Moscow and Kyiv, damaging buildings in both capitals in the past several days. In Odessa, the city's most important Orthodox cathedral is starting an estimated five years of repairs after a Russian missile exploded through its roof in July. Can Vladimir Putin be called a true Christian? Of course not. I don't even have to think about it, because Christians don't kill others. They help each other. Should Vladimir Putin 
be forgiven. Every person deserves to be forgiven, but the most important judgment comes from God. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. Since Sunday night, Niger's airspace remains empty as not a single aeroplane can be seen here flying over the country. As it ignores ECOWAS's deadline to reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum, the junta that's taken over the West African country accuses the group of preparing to intervene. Information currently in our possession indicates that the forces of a foreign power are ready to attack Niger and its people in coordination with ECOWAS as well as armed terrorist groups. So far, the Ivory Coast, Senegal and Nigeria have all said that they would join in to drive out the junta should the military intervention go ahead. Chad is against this, but Mali and Burkina Faso, which are both ruled by juntas, have said that they would come to Niger's defence. Meanwhile, overseas, Niger's coup leaders have closed the country's airspace until further notice after Sunday's deadline to reinstate ousted President Bazoum was allowed to pass. The Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS, had warned that it could take military action if the ousted president was not reinstated. Despite the threat of military action, thousands of supporters of Niger's coup leaders gathered at a stadium in the country's capital yesterday. Have we heard anything yet from ECOWAS in response to the deadline coming and going? No word, Anne-Marie, from ECOWAS, despite that deadline to reverse the coup and reinstate Niger's president, Mohamed Bazoum, having passed yesterday. We know that the coup leaders have closed Niger's airspace after rejecting the ultimatum. And we also know President Bazoum remains under house arrest. Sources close to Bazoum in Niger have told us he is being held hostage. There are soldiers on the roof and surrounding his home while he remains inside with his wife and son. Amid the threat of regional war, we have West African countries racing to pick a side. Nigeria, Senegal, Ivory Coast have said they would send troops, although it should be pointed out the Nigerian Senate has not yet approved this. They want more options explored. And then there's Burkina Faso and Mali, which are ruled by military-backed governments, and they have said that any any intervention in Niger would effectively amount to a declaration of war against them as well. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. In Alaska, a major flooding emergency and what officials are calling an unprecedented glacial melting event. You see it there. That flooding event was considered so extreme that the National Weather Service hydrologist with whom we spoke said he didn't even think it was possible. Now, the peak of the flooding has passed, but there is still some concern about damaging debris in those floodwaters. There it goes, there it goes. This morning, watch as that four bedroom house collapses into that torrent of floodwaters in Alaska. We we're just watching the, the, the banks just slowly erode, but then all of a sudden the whole roof and everything just came down in a big puff of material. Officials blaming this record flooding on overflow from Suicide Basin, an offshoot of the melting Mendenhall Glacier. Juno now under a state of emergency. Two structures have collapsed into the river so far, with more at risk, including a condo building, as officials call the riverbank highly unstable. The record floodwaters choked with debris. Trees like this falling into the water, another tree seen pulled downstream. 
Floodwaters almost reaching 15 feet overnight Saturday, setting a new record. This is a 1% to a 0.2% chance of this type of flood taking place at any given time. So this is a very rare event. Danielle Lindoff has lived along the river for almost 11 years. They've never seen anything like this. It looks like a volcano erupted on our backyard because it's just silt from the river water. Parts of China's northeast are underwater, and many rivers are dangerously full following torrential rain caused by Typhoon Doksuri. Authorities in the provinces of Heilongjiang, Jilin, and Inner Mongolia have raised the alert to the highest levels. Some regions received three times the expected rainfall in the past few days. In Hebei province, the rain has stopped, but recovery efforts are difficult. Emergency teams are using boats to navigate submerged villages. The floods have forced one and a half million Chinese from their homes. There are still 20 plus families trapped in the village, about 30 to 40 people. Many are without electricity and running water, but some are choosing to stay home and protect what they have left. On Friday, hundreds living in Bajo City held a rare protest, angry that flood water from neighboring Beijing was redirected towards them. The provincial Communist Party leader said Hebei was used as a moat to protect and reduce pressure on the capital. Residents say they weren't given ample warning and are demanding compensation. Thousands of homes and businesses have been destroyed, along with food supplies. At 180 centimeters tall, that's how high the water was. The yard is filled with terrible stench. House have collapsed. We have to wade through the water to get anywhere. After so many years of hard work, it is heartbreaking. Our food is all gone. How can we make a living now? Chinese social media has been scrubbed of comments criticizing the government's response, focusing instead on official rescue and cleanup efforts. Beijing has allocated $49 million to assist affected areas. Parts of the capital remain on high alert after flooding caused landslides and roads to collapse. Typhoons during summer and flooding on this scale are common in southern China, but rare in the inland north and northeast. Many of the worst hit areas were ill prepared for this disaster. Scientists say Typhoon Doksuri should serve as a wake up call for government leaders, especially as climate change is expected to bring more extreme weather. People in the town of Prevalje in Slovenia can do nothing but watch on as a torrent of water cuts through their landscape. Rivers forming where once there were roads. People's entire lives washed away. First the bridge collapsed, then debris got stuck to it as it headed towards the house. Last night at 4 p.m. they evacuated us with helicopters. We thought the house would stand because the floodwaters were still far away but it collapsed at 1 a.m. More rain has fallen in Slovenia in the last few days than in a month. The ground in many regions can't absorb any more rainfall, creating new waterways and causing rivers to rise to record levels. With his home gone, this man believes the climate is trying to send the world a message. We all know how it is in the whole world at the moment. Nature is fighting back for all we've done. Water has the power. It destroys everything. Businesses are ruined and mop-up operations are underway in areas where there's been some respite from the flooding. This is the first time it has been this bad. It happened once in 1990, although there was very little water compared to this. It's awful. We put water protection on the doors, but nothing helped. Everything was ripped apart by the water. It was terrible. In the town of Mežica, near the Austrian border, with entire areas submerged, police are having to ferry people to safety. Meanwhile, the army remains on standby for deployment as the situation gets worse. Slovenia's Environment Agency has issued a warning for yet more flooding. We are living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. God in his grace and mercy is warning the world of his impending judgment. The Bible refers to this judgment as the tribulation in which God will pour out his wrath on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. I have had many people ask the question, how do you know Jesus is returning? And why is today any different than any other time in history? Jesus gives his followers the answer to that question in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Jesus told his followers that there would be a convergence of Bible prophecy 
right before his return. Notice Jesus said, when these things begin to happen, Jesus used the plural word things, meaning when you see multiple prophecies converging at the same time, that his return was at the doors, as we read in Matthew 24, 33. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the doors. There can be no denying all these things are beginning to take place. The next question is, how soon is the rapture of the church? Millions are under severe weather warnings across the nation from triple digit heat in the south to damaging storms in the Midwest. A tornado touched down in central Illinois overnight with other areas uh, threatened as storms move east. The potentially dangerous conditions are expected to continue into the week. This is the devastation left behind after a tornado swept through Christian County, Illinois late Sunday, some 25 miles southeast of Springfield. Homes ripped apart and down trees that caused power lines to spark. The damaging storms come as the southern half of the nation continues to roast under the summer sun. Texas, Florida, and California are set to endure another day of heat warnings and watches. In Arizona, Phoenix authorities believe heat is to blame after a woman was found dead on a remote hiking trail late Friday, where afternoon temperatures peaked at 115 degrees. Right now, during this heat, just be very mindful of the times you're hiking. In Texas, the excessive heat is causing the price of electricity to surge. The state runs on its own independent energy grid, and during peak usage on Sunday, costs rose to more than $2,500 a megawatt hour. It is not super typical for us to have it hot all over the state at the same time. We're dealing with multiple 100 degree days, uh, one after the other. So folks tend to consume quite a bit more energy. Dallas is now on a 20 day streak of triple digit temperatures. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, seven and eight. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. 24 people have been injured in a magnitude 5.5 quake in China's Shandong province. The earthquake struck at a depth of 10 kilometers, destroying 74 buildings and 126 houses. More than 60 train services were canceled by China's railway group as a result of that quake. Here in eastern China, the aftermath of an earthquake which struck in the early hours of Sunday is clear for all to see. Dozens of residents have been injured and some have suffered damage to their homes. The quake struck 26 kilometres south of the city of Deju in Shandong province, according to the US Geological Survey. It's the strongest to have hit the province in more than 10 years and was felt as far away as Shanghai. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Actor, producer, and author Kirk Cameron just wants communities to be able to host pro-faith, pro-family story hours. We are on a mission to not only take back one hour at a few libraries, but to redeem every minute of every day in every home, library, and every school. 
We want to spark a genuine, faith-filled revival. But not if the American Library Association has its way. Cameron's book publisher, Brave Books, found a video where the ALA gives tips to libraries on how to block Cameron's See You at the Library event. Here's a snippet. Right now, um, Brave Books and Kirk Cameron are con conducting a campaign to take over libraries on August 5th by applying for, to use media, uh, encouraging individuals to apply to use library meeting rooms for Kirk Cameron story hours. So let's look at how you can use that public forum doctrine to construct policies and procedures that will help you keep control of the library yourself. Kirk Cameron will not be deterred, and he is in focus now. Kirk, first of all, keep you out of the library. They're trying to keep your positive, conservative Christian message out of the library, not you. But they're invi inviting drag queens to read to stories to children. That's okay. Yeah, th that's exactly right. Uh, th this is open intolerance for religious beliefs, and these are good families. This isn't just me. They're look, conspiring to deny access to people of faith all across the country to go to their own publicly funded community libraries to read books to their kids. You know, it screams the height of hypocrisy when those who scream the loudest about book banning are themselves the most intent on book banning, i.e. books about faith and virtue and what is true and beautiful and right. And what's stunning here, Julie, is that this isn't just a few woke libraries across the country. This is the American Library Association, the government yeah. agency that is funded by $250 million teaching libraries how to break the law and deny access to their own community members. Right. So, so let's, uh, it's pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah, let's talk about it because it, it, it is. It, it's, it's, it's an infringement on our laws. And, and you and First Liberty Institute are now sending a letter. That letter is being sent today as we speak to the Institute of Library Services requesting for an open investigation into whether the American Library Association has violated federal law protecting religious liberty and failed to comply with the assurances of non-discrimination required as a federal grant. Back in March, we've got some pictures of you and I. We tried to get in the New York Public Library. We tried to get into any New York Public Library. We weren't allowed. So what did we do, Kirk? We did our reading outside. And we had a, lar a large gathering, but certainly not nearly as large as we would have had had we had a proper space indoors. What was the excuse they gave us? Why don't you tell people? Uh, libraries are filled up. And, and then finally, at the last minute, they said, well, we do have a space for you at this little tiny library on the other side of a train track in a part of town where really nobody wanted to go. And so they thought they could just sort of shove us in a corner, put us at the back of the bus, and, and that would suffice. Well, obviously, it's, it's not. This is internal dealings at a much higher level that are looking to openly suppress people of faith. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, 
we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.